Mr. Fox Hayes once said, I believe the good that men do will live long after they're gone. These words represent a calling for Kentucky farmer and hunter Austin Musselman. He has dedicated more than half his life into transforming his family's three-generation cattle farm into a homegrown sanctuary for wildlife. Join us as we follow Austin and his team and watch them reap the rewards sown by decades of hard work, dedication, and love for one piece of land. Consistently harvesting giant whitetails is an accomplishment in itself. To do it on your own land and to grow one of the largest whitetails ever harvested in the state of Kentucky is in a league of its own. These are their stories and this is how they do it. Welcome to Homegrown. You know, I'm, I'm the third generation of, of this farm. Um, you know, my kids are obviously the fourth generation. Hope it carries on well beyond that. But um, my grandparents got married in 1936. Uh, and, you know, they really weren't farmers at that time. They, they lived in town. My grandfather was in the whiskey business with a relatively small company back then. And my grandmother's grandfather was from Nebraska and he was a cattle farmer and uh, you know, way into shorthorn cattle. So as a wedding gift, he gave them a bull and a couple cows. And uh, you know, they didn't have a farm. They kind of knew some people that farmed, so they didn't know what to do with it. And uh, you know, I have these old letters from the 30s of them writing back and forth, you know, kind of asking questions like, how do we care for these cattle? What do we do? So they kept it out on a cousin's farm and uh, you know they'd go out there and visit it and visit the cows and really start falling in love with the cattle and then checking out the land and they you know, really loved the farm. So they looked around and what they could afford at the time, they bought a hundred acres out. Uh, it's the original core of our farm. So you know when we got the family farm and took it over from the my grandparents, uh, you know, it was really just amazing to me to see, you know, this old cattle farm and it was just fescue fields and, you know, eroded draws and um, kind of beat up land that had been, you know, grazed for so long and kind of abused, um, you know, and, and I saw it as a challenge to really kind of fix it back up on many levels and, you know, that curiosity of nature and seeing things change kind of it struck a chord in me that I could you know take this land and uh, enhance it you know and, and repair it um, you know one of the first things we did was get most of the cattle off the property and just kind of intensely graze them in one area but um, it was just really a, I started understanding that this is like a canvas to me like a piece of art or someone starts with just a blank uh, slate and then all of a sudden they, you know, can put a little of the base layers in and then start getting the finer details and things. And, and then when you step back from it, look at it, you're like, wow, we actually really created something. You know, I did what I could in those early years trying to make changes on the farm and I couldn't do it all by myself and, and I didn't have, the wherewithal at the time to you know hire somebody to you know really work so i you know it was really nice when i found other guys that were interested in hunting and in the outdoors like i was and so todd glenn and i are really the nucleus of really what we're doing now and uh and, and it's just amazing when you get people with different skill sets and strengths uh how can you conform a team? You know, my grandfather um, had a little sign on his desk and it said, not one of us is smart as all of us. And I think we've developed this relationship of hunting and working together and the, the food plots and the whole program we're running is that collaboration of, you know, all of us coming together and, and uh, sharing that. You know, 
to grow deer and to grow food plots and to grow turkeys and quail. You know, it, it's much like, you know, planting a garden and growing a tomato. You know, a homegrown tomato tastes nothing like a store-bought tomato. You know, harvesting the deer that you've grown yourself um, and you've had a relationship with, you've found their sheds for three years, you've you know, tracked them with trail cameras and reviewed pictures and you know, know that this deer has had its whole life on your farm and, and you're the one that's providing its food, its cover, uh, watching it in the fields. And you know, it's, it's anticlimactic really when you harvest the animal because it's the whole journey that led up to it. You know, and as I um, hunt and I enjoy the land and I'm out there and I, um, you know, I'm doing all these things that I've changed the land, I've planted these things and seen it evolve over years. You know, as I look back at it now after decades of doing it, you know, and I thought what I was doing was changing the land, I was making it improve and grow, but inside it was really growing me. me opening day and opening week here, it's just, it's really special, you know, you've been waiting so long since last year hunting and, you know, it's, it's finally arrived. There at that, that magic time, you know, these other deer kind of look up and he just appeared into view and I'm like, that's him. 